Two items about Bosnia-Herzegovina tonight which demonstrate to much of the world how unreal the situation there is. The leaders of the Serb and Croatian forces showed up in Geneva today with new maps of Bosnia demonstrating their intention to carve out most of the country for themselves and leave the Muslims out. The U.S. has done very little to prevent it. And yet at the same time, the first American ambassador to Bosnia since the Republic declared its independence last spring showed up in Sarajevo to present his credentials to the Muslim president. The world's oldest and largest insurer has lost a fortune. When we heard this week that Lloyd's of London was more than $4 billion in the red in 1990, Lloyd's waits a few years to announce its figures, it was more than a case of a 300-year-old British insurance organization getting itself into trouble. Lloyd's has a financial crisis which may yet be felt here on the other side of the Atlantic. ABC's Mike Lee. If you do, you're a fool. It was Lloyd's which insured film star Betty Grable's so-called million-dollar legs. Christopher Reeves had a policy for $20 million while filming Superman. When a Memphis radio station offered a million dollars to anyone who could find Elvis alive, Lloyd's provided insurance just in case. Lloyd's has made a huge profit by charging huge premiums on unusual policies. At the same time, betting it would not have to pay out. But in recent years, there's been a string of disasters, both natural and man-made. The results were a disaster for Lloyd's as well. Billions of dollars paid in claims to policyholders affected by hurricanes, oil spills, and earthquakes. The financial aftershocks have shaken Lloyd's. Many of its 30,000 private investors are at risk. Some face bankruptcy because Lloyd's required their personal property as collateral to cover any of its losses. The Lloyd's crisis could threaten the survival of the British government. That's because 40 conservative members of parliament are Lloyd's investors. Even if only nine of them are obliged to resign because of bankruptcy, the conservatives could lose their hold on power. Many financially desperate investors are now accusing Lloyd's of fraud, insisting that the insurance giant refused to disclose bad investments. Those underwriters must think themselves very lucky that Lloyd's is not based in the Middle East. If it were, a large number of them now would be walking around with only one hand. Lloyd's troubles are having an effect in the U.S. To make up for its massive losses, Lloyd's is passing along higher costs to American insurance companies it insures. That means higher premiums for some policyholders in America. As a result, Lloyd's is expecting its first profit in several years. But many of its investors still face bankruptcy and are threatening a legal battle which could cripple the world's largest insurance market. Mike Lee, ABC News, London. There were two new readings on the state of the U.S. economy today. Orders to factories for long-lasting durable goods went down last month for the third month in a row, down 1.6%. On a more positive note, the Federal Reserve Board indicates that the winter doldrums may be over. The economy says the Federal Reserve has been expanding recently at a slow to moderate pace. On Wall Street, the Dow Jones Industrials lost more than 30 points today to close at 34.66, and the trading was heavy. When we come back, educating the most seriously disabled children in regular classrooms, our American Agenda. We have put an experiment on the American Agenda tonight which is causing quite a stir in education. What happens when you take seriously disabled children out of their special education classes and put them in the regular classroom with everyone else? The argument against it has always been it won't give the special ed kids the attention they need and it will be distracting to the others. Our agenda reporter, Linda Patillo, has gone to a school where they are trying to prove the skeptics wrong. Your group. Right. It's a typical day for the fifth graders at Johnson Middle School. What language is most commonly spoken in Mexico? S. Judy, who cannot speak or write, is on the winning team in the geography contest. H. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Quiet on the set. In the classroom next door, Stacy, who has multiple disabilities, is included in the class play. And Jessica, who has Down syndrome, is getting ready to go to lunch with her best friend. Wait, Jess, where's your lock? You gotta put your lock back on. In most any other school district in the country, Jessica, Judy, and Stacy would be segregated, taught in a separate special education classroom or an institution. It used to be out of sight, out of mind. In our school, we want to achieve uh, the same things for all students. Not all, all except Johnny, who uh, can't walk very well, or all, all, all except uh, Jane, who uh, has a disability. Uh, we seek it for all children. 
And to make sure they succeed, the school system moved the resources the children need into the classroom with them. Every seriously disabled child is assigned a full-time aid. When Judy, who also has behavioral problems, refuses to participate, her aide steps in so the other student's schoolwork is not disrupted. What's D say? Lesson plans are modified for each child. While first graders print their letters, Jenny traces hers. You're almost done! And at each grade level, a special education teacher works with classroom teachers and individual students. Andrew has multiple disabilities, but with the extra help, he does the day's math lesson, too. Yes, Andrew! Rectangle. But is the education of the other students really not disrupted? Andrew, let's make this into a square. School officials here say skeptical parents were convinced the system works after they sat in on classes. If you have the appropriate support services and you're not skimping anywhere, I don't see it coming out on any other child. I don't see it as being a hindrance or a negative. Even the most ardent supporters say if a school district tries this without all the necessary resources, it is bound to fail. So you're going to the library. Those extra resources don't necessarily cost any more. Johnson City spends $1.5 million a year on special education, the same amount it spent when the children were educated separately. While the costs are the same, the benefits are vastly different. Right. As many as 10% of the students in any given class may have some form of disability. To the children, that's nothing out of the ordinary. It doesn't seem to matter to Bobby's kindergarten classmates that they can't understand him when he reads aloud. No, wait, wait. Ready? They applaud his effort as they would that of any other child. These kids will all learn to grow up and live with people who are disabled and be very comfortable with it. That acceptance, parents say, has made an enormous difference in the lives of their disabled children. Judy's parents moved to Johnson City three years ago so she could be in a regular classroom. It's role models. And Judy's role models in a segregated classroom were children with challenging behaviors. She learned such things as hair pulling, pinching, kicking. She's making dramatic progress, and that's what education is supposed to be about. It is working for these children, and they will tell you so. I like this school. Do you have lots of friends? Yeah, love my friends. Johnson City has found a way to let all its children grow up together. Linda Patillo, ABC News, Johnson City, New York. When we come back, an endangered place. Tonight on Nightline, jewels, furs, and cutlery. It's the very lucrative Home Shopping Network, and it may soon get its biggest boost from the U.S. government tonight. Finally tonight, the National Trust for Historic Preservation. The National Trust is an organization which does what it can to protect bits and pieces of the nation's physical history. Every year it issues what amounts to an endangered list, buildings and other historic sites that are threatened by neglect, or in most cases, overly aggressive development. This year the Trust says that a whole state is its number one concern. ABC's Jim Hickey on Vermont. It is called the Green Mountain State for good reason. Pastoral landscapes and rustic charm make Vermont a New England jewel. But the whole state has landed on the historic preservation endangered list because of things like this and this. Unplanned, uncontrolled development, says the National Trust for Historic Preservation. The Trust calls it Sprawl Mart. It's symbolic of what's happening all over the country, that these huge shopping malls have come in and totally overwhelmed the capacity of, of small businesses to comp compete. Walmart stores, among the largest developers in the area, criticized the National Trust announcement. In a release statement, Walmart said it helps revitalize small-town America and hopes to have the opportunity to be a contributing partner in Vermont. In fact, some towns hit hard by a bad economy that has hurt all of New England welcome new shopping malls because it means jobs. But to preserve Vermont's natural beauty, the state has had laws regulating development for more than 20 years. 
And this week, the governor signed a new one, allowing local officials to give landowners a tax break if they preserve open spaces. The whole town benefits from having open land. It's a town-controlled uh, program. It is not uh, based on what the state can afford. Despite the laws, there is no statewide blueprint for land use. And the National Trust is trying to remind this state it is facing a showdown with developers. Jim Hickey, ABC News. And that's our report on World News Tonight. I'm Peter Jennings. Nightline later. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night.